Updates television and thank you for staying with us. All right, it's that time of the morning where we begin our conversations. And as mentioned, we're speaking with Mr. Annie Roberts, former Minister of Sports here in Trinidad and Tobago, and we are addressing the state of sports in the in the country of Trinidad and Tobago, especially coming out of the Olympics 2024. Uh, Mr. Roberts, good morning and welcome. Good morning and good morning, Tobago. I wish I was over there. Yes, Tobago is indeed a beautiful place. And we're happy to have you this morning. Um, you know, of course, we're speaking about sports just coming out of the Olympics 2024. And I know that you have a lot to say about the performance of our athletes there, not just for Olympics, but in general, the state of sports and sports maintenance, the maintenance of facilities in Trinidad and Tobago as it relates to support for athletes as they prepare for championships across the globe. So we speak, we're going to head straight on into that conversation coming out of Paris, um, no medals, a close call, Jerry Richards almost, you know, coming in there, breaking his, his own record, and of course, almost meddling, but still coming home empty-handed. What is your position where all this is concerned, especially in the preparation for Olympics 2024? Well, unfortunately for me, while people are asking me to speak about it, it is very painful because... I love sport. Sport is life. Sport, I was a national swimmer since 1977, then a national under-19 footballer and an Olympic coach for 35 years. And to see Trinidad and Tobago, the land of my birth, the land that I became and stayed and did not take opportunities to go out elsewhere to coach, go to the Olympics first and foremost with only 16 athletes. 17 officials, more officials than athletes, and to go with athletes who were underprepared, underfinanced, lack of investment, and not ready to take on the world. Jareem Richards did very well, brilliant, amazing run from lane nine. But other than that, Trinidad and Tobago's performance left much to be desired, especially from a country with such a rich history in Olympic sport performance. 1948, we won our first medal with Rodney Wilkes. 1952, we had medalists in weightlifting, Rodney Wilkes and Lennox Kilgore. Over the years, with our 4 by 400 men and 400 men open flat quarter mile. 1964, bronze. 1966, Commonwealth Games world record. Easy Crawford, 1976 beating the world in Montreal in that 100 from the inside lane. We had Otto Bolden in 96 and 2000, George Bovell 2004, Richard Thompson 94 by 100 in 2008, Beijing 2012. The best Olympic performance in history while I was Minister of Sport, Keshon Walcott throwing 84-58 for gold. And then we got a silver and two bronze medals. Lalonde Gordon from Tobago with that 400 double bronze, 400 quarter mile, and the relay. To come and see our quarter mile relay in 2024, run 1.63 seconds slower than Wendell Motley, Motley Ed Bern Roberts, Bernard, Ed Skinner, Ken Bernard in 1964. To run slower than our relay team in 1964, there is something drastically wrong. And it's, it starts with selection, passion, belief, and understanding. But all due respect to the Honorable Shamfa Kujo, she didn't want to be Minister of Sport. She never dreamt of being Minister of Sport. She didn't have a passion for sport. In fact, those of you who follow politics will remember when Keith Rowley moved her from the portfolio of tourism, in order to get some of his more preferred people to be negotiating a branding of a hotel paid for, to be paid for by citizens to the tune of seven billion dollars to build a sandals and a beaches on Tobago without consultation with the THA. When Rowley moved Shampa Kujo from tourism to sport, she said, when your own dog bites you, you're well bitten. She'd never wanted to be in sport. 
When I was allowed to be Minister of Sport, it, it was a total honor. I have dreamt of that occasion. I prepared myself from since I was 15 years old, educating myself, loving sport, following every sport on God green earth to know what to do, coaching, development, investment, talent identification, understanding primary school development, education and sport, student athlete, total participation in sport elite level. So when you start with a lady, a minister, a member of parliament who does not want to be there, you start bad because you need leadership. And leadership comes from inside the cabinet because the minister has to know, has to believe what resources are needed, not only for the elite athletes, but for the coaches, for get out there to get special, special camps, education, science, maintain facilities, ensure that children can participate and get funneled into pathways to success. You do not go to the Olympics and get medals by get the sport. The reason people are passionate about sport, sport reflects life. And you do everything to get an Olympic medal. First of all, you have to see children. You have to see their fast twitch mu muscles, their anthropological measurements, what they are good at. You have to test them and see what their target, your vascular system is. Are they fit? Are they fast? What are their fast twitch fibers? What are their white muscle fibers that could transfer to speed or to aerobic conditioning? What's their coordination, the eye-hand coordination, the agility? We need people's eyes on babies from two years old to five years old to put them and select them. What the mother and father tall? Are they going to be fast bowlers or footballers or volleyball players? Are they going to be fast 100 meter runners or 1500 meter runners? We have to get our children up from Tobago straight down to, to Labre in Trinidad. We have to get them in the hands of qualified officials. All of this was going on when I was minister, unfortunately. Because of the lack of passion and the lack of understanding, there was a cut in sport from elite level. When I was there, there were 85 athletes receiving elite level funding to help them pay their coaches and their physiotherapists, their gym fees, their supplements, their diets, their travel for competition. That was cut. Even their medical expenses were paid for. There were coaches that were being educated consistently. Certification was going on. Right in school, we were employing teachers and adding on more uh, advanced identification and physical preparation for growth and maturational stages so that athletes could get found out, that the eyes could see them, and then they could be put into the hands of coaches. Facilities across Trinidad and Tobago were being lit up and, and enhanced with, with uh, conference center, pavilion, teaching methods. The Dwight York Stadium, when I left there in 2014, there was already approved $125 million because Dwight York Stadium is dangerously dilapidated because of the salt, sea, and wind conditions, the electrical, the rail foundation, the metal. And up to now, they've just done some paint job. And Mama Guy, the people of Tobago, they took call me, but took that 120 million. If you go back to a speech in 2015, November, where he said the sport company and the Ministry of Sport had hundreds of millions of dollars left there. And it wasn't used. Yes, it was there to rehabilitate and do over and ensure the safety and security of the Dwight York Stadium, the Hayes Crawford Stadium, and the Manny Ram John Stadium. Now all of our stadia, all of our facilities are dilapidated. The aquatic center that is in Coover that I built and designed and made sure that the contractors put the best of the best in the USA in one position, in one place. There is no facility like that with 50 meter by 25 meter pools, a diving well, 25 meters by 20 meters deep, dry dive facilities, aqua aerobics. There's uh, for synchronized swimming, a bow system that you, the children can hear music underwater as good as you are hearing me now. These things have not been utilized. There is no plan for development, no coaches. On top of that, I don't only want to blame the government. That's just the leadership from the organizations and the association. They, we still are myopic and selfish. We only get involved when our own child is involved. We are not there for the benefit of the sport. So we we employ a sort of nepotistic uh, selection process for Mr. coaches Robert. and managers and so on.
Mr. Roberts, I'm feeling your passion here for sport, right? And I understand that you do get emotional when you're speaking about sports. And you're mentioning about all the facilities that are available in Trinidad and Tobago and the state of the facilities, the investments that were made uh, when you were minister and the investments that continue to be made. Well, we want to talk now about accountability because if all these facilities are available and the, the opportunity for investment is there, then what then is the, is the, um, the problem? What is the, the, why, why are we in this situation where um, our athletes, one, they are asking for more support, and two, they are not meddling at championships, especially the Olympics. Additionally, what does it really take? I want you to tell us what does it take to, to, to create a, an Olympian, somebody who we know is well prepared, well grounded, holistically, to take on the feet at the Olympics and come back home with a medal. Well, the facilities are there, but the PNM has closed them off and they're not accessible to the people. That's the point I'm making. When we build them and when they were there and maintain them, they were left open and util could be utilized free by the population. The PNM government has a policy of selective use that you have to know somebody to get into the National Tennis Center to play tennis. You have to know somebody to go and use the aquatic center. These facilities are not being utilized to the maximum as they were intended. They should be left open and free for the entire population to utilize parents to exercise while their children are involved in sport. So we need to understand not only in financial investment, but we have to invest in coach education. There was there were sporting camps in Easter and summer vacation where coaches could go and see 21,000 children. There were coaches who put out sport development officers to go and search and look. What it takes to beat the world, you have to first identify talent, as I was saying. You have to see the athletes. You have to go out into every nook and cranny and find athletes that will be have the necessary tools that God gave them to perform in different sports. So if you're looking for a swimmer, you will go all across the primary school, get them in the YMCA in Tobago, look at the field that they have for the water, look at their mother and father, see what sort of genetic makeup they have, look and see how tall they will be, what events, what stroke they will do. Then you have to start to prepare them physically, physiologically, and mentally. You need psychologists and coaches that are qualified to develop the mentality because finding talent is one thing. If you don't have the wear it all, the discipline, the punctuality, the stick to the ability to take pressure, like George Bovell, who has Tobago heritage, like Dwight York. Why is Dwight York the greatest footballer to ever come out of Trinidad and Tobago? Because he was a Tobagonian. He was not soft like Trini. He did not have that mall mentality at 12, 13, 14 to go and lime and go down the islands and go to the river. He was practicing with his ball. He was practicing with his coach, Burton Sinclair. He was running. He was fit. Even up to now, Dwight York is probably my 55, 54. He is fitter than some fellas who are on the national team right now. His mental attitude and love for the sport, his discipline, his passion, his hard work took him to Manchester United treble, took us to the World Cup because of his mental attitude. They had other players who had the similar sort of physical skill and touch, but Dwight York made it because he had the parenting, the character, the discipline, and the, and the work ethic. And the support, and, uh, yeah, that's right, and the, the discipline and the work ethic, of course. And you know, Mr. Robert, this leads me, uh, we're going to take a very short break, but when we come back, I want us to start talking about the culture um, that we have here as it relates to the investment in holistically into the sport. Because you spoke so much about Dwight York and the attributes that he has that has led to his success. So we want to speak a little bit more about that. But when we come back from the break, we'll head on into that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with Mr. Anil Roberts, former sports minister here in Trinidad and Tobago, as we address the state of sports in Trinidad and Tobago. We're going to go for a short break. And when we come back, we're going to continue that conversation. And as we go for a break, we invite you to help us. Share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be right back. Coconut 
Sports Cafe, the buffet restaurant that specializes in all your tasty local dishes for breakfast and for lunch. Breakfast includes coconut bake and sada roti served with chokers, bulge oil and sausages in tomato sauce. Not forgetting beef and cheese pies, shepherd's pie, macaroni pie and rice in various styles. Meats served in a variety of flavors, garden salads and pasta salads. All this accompanied by fruit juices, coconut water, your choice of a great combination to appease your taste buds. So call us today to order as we are here to accommodate your busy schedules or if you are having a cooking day off. Security Services Company is the most advanced security service in Tobago. Ask about our cash and transit service. It's safe, risk-free, reliable, and timely. We provide safe banking delivery for all business types and sizes with highly trained staff, 24-7 monitoring, coordinated emergency response, and a well-maintained fleet of armored vehicles. Contact us at 660-7723 or visit our website at www.mi4securitytt.com to sign up today. Stop it, you have to stop it. Welcome to my kitchen, guys. You have to stop it again. That's it, that's the intro. Let's do it one more time, right? Welcome back to the Morning Show on Tobago Updates Television and thank you for staying with us. We continue conversations this morning we're speaking with Mr. Anil Roberts, the former Minister of Sports here in Trinidad and Tobago, as we continue to address the state of sports in Trinidad and Tobago. Before we went to a break, we were speaking about creating an Olympian and what it takes to, um, what it takes to create one, um, the investment that needs to be made. And we were talking about um, the athlete himself. Uh, Mr. Roberts, you were talking about the dedication, the passion, the integrity and all of these um, attributes that contribute to an athlete being ready for, um, you know, a major championship, one such as the Olympics, with reference to Mr. Dwight York. And now I want to talk about the actual culture of our country here in Trinidad and Tobago. When we make reference to other countries who prepare for an Olympics or any um, major championship, we know that we don't start a week before, a month before, even a year or two before. Um, there must be some type of mindset that leads to creating this athlete, that means to, that leads to creating the support and the community that will be there to, to lend that measure of support to ensure that we emerge successfully. So what are some of the things that are required are necessary to ensure this success at any great championship where sport is concerned? Well, you are so absolutely correct. And it starts the womb. You, the parents have to believe and understand that what they are producing in that womb of the mummy is potentially a womb beater. Whether it is in sport or in academia or, or art or music, you have to believe that. And then you have to stimulate and prepare that child teach that child the, the, the necessary tenets of discipline, courtesy, hard work, 
from the time that child is conceived coming out. The first five or seven years is when you're going to develop that culture. Now, unfortunately, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a culture, more so in Trinidad, but Tobago is slowly catching us, that we are laissez fair. We do not believe in merit. We don't like competition. All of a sudden, we become soft. We, 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 we don't deal with problems head on. We accept anything. We are pliable. We change our minds quickly. Our, our, our peers, our friends, when we are working hard, do you know how much ridicule Dwight York used to get? Because he always with the football and so on, while his friends were liming and going out and talking and so on, he was with that ball. Other athletes who work hard go into a school system that they become pariahs because of their discipline. That culture must change. In the other places like the USA that got 40 gold medals, China 40 gold medals. When you have talent, you are surrounded by people at every juncture who enhance your, your talent, encourage your talent, big you up, as they say, pat you on the back, push you forward, whether in the grocery or the pharmacy or the village, people know you and encourage you and admire your hard work that you got up four o'clock in the morning to run and do your fitness, that you go and you go to the gym and you work hard. And then there's the news and the media understands from an early age what is necessary. Then there are competitions every weekend that you could test yourself and also keeps you humble. Place like Trinidad and Tobago, as soon as you show talent, you start to win at eight, nine, ten years old. And then we get what is called staritis. We feel we good. We feel we better than everybody else. And a humbling experience is just a plane ride away. Because when you go to meet those countries, those athletes that come from a culture of competition, when you go to meet Japanese athletes, when I watched them train in 1996, while I was coaching three Olympians, and I saw the Japanese swimming team chain training, the athletes would just come out, bow to the coach, do their workout to perfection, finish the workout, bow to the coach and leave while I am shouting and screaming, come on, do better. Why are you all going so slow? Pick it up. We have Olympics coming and all of this I have to do because we have not developed an overall culture based on merit. We do not respect merit. We have a political system and a system that, en that encourages need to know, nepotism. You have to be my friend to get through rather than who is the best move forward? We're changing scholarships to bursaries. And when you go out to test yourself now against the world, which is the Olympics, you will be beaten because your culture has not produced greatness. Your culture has not enhanced your talent. You have not been encouraged and pushed to those boundaries. So when you get out there and you ask your body and your mind to do it, it just isn't there. about uh, being laser fair and just doing going through the paces and not giving that measure of commitment and the sacrifice that it takes are we now talking about addressing what it really means to be um to have national pride in anything that we do uh it's just that we're speaking about sports today but uh, how do we address that and get people to understand what it really means even when we make comparisons to other countries as you just made reference to japan and other countries who they, they train rigorously with the aim in mind because when you enter a competition you're going for gold right that should be your mindset that should be what you're thinking about we're thinking listen we're going to bring home as many goal as possible so how do we address that situation now and get people not just the athletes not just the community that support them but the entire nation to understand what national pride is to lend that measure of support to boost morale uh you know just to be there and to set to lend that measure of support to the athletes to the community that is going with them that is supporting them that is training them providing all the measure of um, support they need, whether it's psychological, physical, um, even their diet, their nutrition, um, stripping away the culture of um, just being casual about things. We need, how do we address um, getting people to understand the importance of national pride and the successes it can bring us if we really stand in that position? But you know it, and I know it. We used to have it. My father is from Tobago. My grandfather was Principal Roberts. My grandmother was a music teacher in Tobago. The discipline and the culture that you get from your parents, teaching, making you respect first and foremost, your mother, your father, your family, then your teachers, then your sports coaches and your area. 
we have lost respect our parents are not teaching the right things our culture has diminished we throw things out imagine you could be in tobago the most beautiful place on god green earth and if you drive around enough you will see a citizen open their window and throw something out that in other countries is unfathomable that will be so unacceptable not because of punishment not because of a possible ticket or because of the police, just because of love and respect of your place, of your rock, of the place that has made you. We are lost. We have lost it from parenting. We've lost it from the communities. We've lost it from individuals. We've lost it from schools. We have children talking to teachers how they want. We could have never done that a teacher represents your mother and your father once you leave school once you leave home and put on your uniform we have to get back to basics we do not some of us do not even know the anthem we don't stand up straight when you see the anthem play man children have on the hat the fancy hat we are lost and we must find ourselves but we must first accept that we are lost when you know where you are then you could start to improve but if you want to tell fibs or lie to yourself and fool yourself that we're still good, the crime situation starts with bad parenting, starts with lack of patriotism, lack of respect, lack of care. For a young boy to pull a trigger, he does not even know love. He does not know that that bullet might take away somebody, mother, somebody, father, somebody will be crying because we have no love. We've lost our community spirit and we must get it back at every juncture from primary school you must stand up to your anthem and sing it every morning say your prayers talk to your god whatever you call your god respect other religions talk to people we are lost and it's all this that is the tapestry from which olympic success or success globally whether it's in literature in arts in academia in movies in tv in whatever it is when the west indies were the greatest that's our culture in the caribbean we were the greatest because we came from a community where the community raised the child we grew up with respect you could not be rude to your neighbor you had to pick up and clean up the yard in your house we are lost and unless we as a country decide to find ourselves we in real trouble uh, Mr. Roberts, of course, I appreciate everything that you've said so far. And in closing, you know, what are, I would give you three points. What are the three main points that you think we should focus on if we want to improve the state of our country, um, increase national pride, and of course, produce winners on any international stage? Parent education from the womb, early childhood and primary school, respect more pay and and uh, bonuses for teachers with a program also to instill the basics of courtesy respect punctuality discipline saying thank you at primary school and then identifying talent looking for talent in teachers and parents who could see and understand how to find athletes at an early age and then show them the pathway to success those are the places that we need to begin. And then you add on coach certification, putting merit of kinship and moving forward. And then we could get back to how we were. We are a great people. We have the greatest. But we will contact with how to ensure that success is a possibility. Thank you so much, Mr. Roberts, you know, for giving us your strong points there and for engaging in the conversation. And of course, reminding us that we need to go back to grassroots, go back to the basics where we respected each other, where we looked out for each other. And when we knew when we leave home, we are representing our parents. And so we had to maintain good manners. Uh, thank you so much there, ladies and gentlemen. We've been speaking with Mr. Anil Roberts, former Minister of Sports here in Trinidad and Tobago, as we speak about the situation of sports in Trinidad and and Tobago. We have to go for a short break before we continue conversations in studio. And as we go for a break, we invite you to help us. Share the life, share the life, share the life. We'll be right back. Put a smile on your face.